Hello everyone, today I want to talk about one more of my hobbies, which is photography. And in particular, how I managed to make such an expensive and artistic craft to be even more confusing and difficult to understand. I have this strobe light, I had it for a little while, it got some uh, wear marks on it. It works from 110 grid power and I wonder if I could convert it into a DC operated unit so that I could take it with me to a shooting location and not worry about running wires or where do I find the power from. So I would be good with a battery pack, maybe something like this and not having to carry around one of these. If you want to buy a monolight strobe that will work on location without a grid power it can run you anywhere from $300 to 1000 or even more. So I want to find out if I can hack into this one and find a point where I can connect the battery to and get it to work on DC voltage in the field. I have few of these strobes and they are as cheap as they come. They are made with a typical Chinese minimalistic approach and it was made with a bare minimum parts necessary to just to get it to work so that they can sell it. So what do we have inside? Um, cheap one-sided circuit board with more than half of the components not installed. I wonder what functionality of this strobe light would be if all the parts were there. Before doing anything else gotta discharge all the energy stored in the capacitors. All the controls of the strobe light are located on the rear panel. The ready light, the light sensor, the test button, power switch, model light switch, as well as the fuse. In order to better understand the work principle of this schematics, I needed to draw a diagram of it. So I scratched those symbols with the sharpie on the conductive side of the PCB. And I'm still puzzled by that little red component. It looks like a resistor that had a little coil wrapped around it with only one output from one side of the coil, I guess. So if you know what that is, please put it in comment. Let's learn something together. So the AC 115 volt is turned into 12 volt by using those resistors and capacitors and uh, diodes. And it's used to power the electronics such as this operational amplifier as well as a triggering circuit. So the main power goes through this inductance and this main triac is controlled by the optocoupler that gets its signal from the op amp. When triac opens the power goes to the voltage multiplier circuit that is uh, drawn right here it can also be represented as like this down here. And the main DC voltage is stored in the power bank capacitors, these ones. And this is the flash tube. The voltage of the main bank, the DC power bank, is basically broken down using these voltage dividers and it fed into the comparator input of the op operational amplifier. And basically what this voltage divider does is set the level at which the operational amplifier will shut down and therefore stop charging the power bank and therefore allow us to control the flash brightness output. The non-inverted input of the uh, operational amplifier is controlled by this little circuit there which is optocoupler. So as the voltage of the power bank rises, optocoupler opens and grounds the input so that the operational amplifier shuts down. As this one uh, op amp closes down, the other one opens up and radio light comes on. The triggering circuit contains one more optocoupler. Uh, the LED from which is fed from the main DC power bank. And as we press any of those trigger buttons, the LED lights up and that transistor closes and sends the positive 12 volt voltage over 
to the gate of the thyristor. And as the thyristor activates, it basically sends the ground signal to the flash tube. And poof goes the flash tube. The other t uh, way to trigger this strobe light is using the light sensor. Photodiode is used in this circuit and as the light of another flash strikes the photodiode it closes and sends the positive signal from the 12 volt supply onto the gate of the thyristor. Same thing happens to the thyristor and the flash goes poof again. And that is the mystery component I spoke about it early, which looks like a resistor with a coil wrapped around it. So that's about it for the circuit. And the simple answer to my first question, can I hack into it and find a point to connect a DC battery to get it to work with a DC battery? The answer is no. The voltage multiplier needs AC voltage to work properly. It cannot work with DC voltage. So unless I come up with something to in convert DC to AC, this is not as simple as I thought it would be. Now we're going to try and put it back together and see if it's going to work the first time. One of my greatest fears is to become a couch expert. And I want to clarify, couch expert is not a person who has exceptional knowledge and extensive background and in-depth understanding of couches. Couch expert is somebody who does very little themselves and quick to criticize and give advice to other people who try something. So I like to try things. I like to try new things and maybe fail so, uh, from time to time. But at least I can tell I tried it and I did it. I know how to do it. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe even learn something. If so, hit that like button. Please also share and subscribe for more videos. And thanks for watching.